Okay, boys and girls, today we're ta taking a look at my ultimate high-end survival knife. Now, in a video I did a while back, I did a kind of more realistic or budget-oriented ultimate survival knife. But a lot of people in that video asked, where did my where did my Chris Reeve Pacific go? And this is the Pacific. It certainly has gone nowhere. I still love this knife. And for those who have a little bit higher end budget, I'm gonna be talking about my high end ultimate survival knife. Now this is ultimately the knife and setup that is sitting or that usually rides with me whenever I go on adventures. You know, uh, this usually sits in the truck. And I've talked about, you know, truck survival kit items before. The Chris Reeve knife specific has come up in just about every discussion. So this is usually my truck survival knife. And so this is realistically what I use. So don't be disparaged if you have a, but don't be disparaged if you have a Cold Steel SRK. They are fantastic and amazing knives. So those are incredible knives, but this is my personal top survival knife. So jumping into this video, we're first going to take a look at the modifications I've done to the knife, then we'll take a look at the modifications I've done to the sheath and sheath equipment or survival equipment. So let's jump right into it. So starting off, giving you guys a view of what you all want to see, what you came here for, <laughs> the uh, Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. Now this is the Pacific itself, but this is not just a standard run-of-the-mill stock Pacific. This is a Pacific that I have modified quite a bit. So the first thing that I did to this Pacific, and admittedly though to the horror of hardcore CRK fans, I did flatten the spine of this blade and the reason why I did this was because the standard spine as you can kind of see up here is rounded so it is not able to strike a ferrocerium rod at all. So what I did was that I flattened the spine uh, in about the first you know two and a half inches of the blade you know, kind of flattened it down so I can use this area to strike ferro rods and I sharpened it up nice so that it will work well. Moving back from that, I also rounded the top kind of guard, so these knives, in case you don't know the Pacific, was designed as a partial fighting kind of combat utility knife, and so I rounded the top of this guard so that it's less of like a traditional knife guard and that my thumb can rest easy on this area. So I did actually end up re-rounding this after grinding it down so that it was not as obtrusive. So that was the secondary uh, modification I did to this knife to make it more of a survival blade. And then the third modification I did was that I rounded off the back of the spine here. So this area right here was actually kind of ground to a point for being a proverbial glass breaker. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of hokey and garbage anyways. But what I ended up finding was that it ended up stabbing me when I would wear this on the belt a lot. So I really was not a fan of that. So I just, of course, hit that nice and rounded it up. So now it will not poke me or stab me or anything like that. So those are the modifications that I did to the CRK Pacific to make it a more survival friendly knife. So I can choke up on it very easily. I can strike ferro rods with it nicely. And overall, it's just a good solid package. Lastly, I did also add a small lanyard to this blade as I usually do with most of my knives. This really isn't so that you can worm your hand through it, but rather that it can help you retrieve your blade out of a sheath or things such as that. So it's really just more of a retrieval lanyard and you know, it does look a little stylish as well. So compliments the knife nicely. So that is the CRK Pacific and the bonds that I did to the actual blade. Now let's talk about the sheath modifications. So I'm not gonna count this pouch here as a modification because that's really more survival equipment. So we'll get into that when we do. But the first thing I did was that I redid the uh, kind of cordage situation so the blade out of box comes with like a nylon kind of twisted nylon rope and there's nothing inherently wrong with that but of course paracord is much better so I redid that with paracord kind of ran it down gave myself instead I think there was like four feet of that stock so I gave myself about 10 feet of paracord it looks a little bit long but you can also kind of tuck this up as well uh, when it's being stored so it's not as obtrusive but yeah so I redid that gave myself a little bit more paracord I did leave this original kind of slider bit on here uh, 
so that it looks, you know, nice and trim and nice as well. So then uh, lastly, uh, the only other modification I made to the sheath was there is existing this already loop uh, down here, and this loop is designed, I believe, originally to run things like webbing, as you can see here, so that when you wear this on your side or on your belt, you can attach this point to your thigh, so that way you don't have a floppy sheath, you know, on the side of your uh, hip, but you can, you know, secure it down. So I do just have some, you know, standard kind of tan-colored webbing with a little, you know, bit here, so all I do is I just run it through here and ratchet it down so that it has a nice secure fit on my thigh when I do wear it. So that's just pretty basic, pretty simple stuff, and that just lives right there. So nothing crazy there, but yeah. So those are the modifications I made to the sheath. Everything else is pretty much stock, as you guys can see there. Very well loved, very well worn. But the next point is survival equipment. So for the survival equipment, though, you might count the paracord as part of the survival equipment because cordage is definitely righteous for survival. The specific survival equipment that I have attached to this sheath is pretty basic. And once again, I wanted to follow the same kind of mental path that I did with the budget, uh, the budget ultimate survival knife. I just wanted a little bit more high end and more capabilities. So the first one of the two pieces in this kit or in this little survival pouch is a ferro rod. So this is the ferro rod, a gob spark that I popped the handle off of because I did not like the handle of the gob sparks and then wrapped it with orange duct tape for high vis and then, you know, put some high vis paracord on that and then I lashed it to the actual sheath or rather the paracord attached to the sheath so that way if it does accidentally pop out of its sheath doing whatever, um, it is secure, but also if I need to take it off, it is very easy to remove this from the sheath. So very easy to take off, um, but at the same time also very secure. This is not going to go anywhere on me. Okay, so that's the ferro rod. And then the other piece of the survival equipment is the multi-tool. So I also have it secured to the paracord on the sheath so that it does not run away. Um, or really, not so that it doesn't run away, but really just so I don't have this lanyard kind of flopping out. So I do have the high vis lanyard, I just don't like it flopping all about. Um, obviously, I doubt it will make a great escape from that uh, pouch. So right here we have a Gen 2 Leatherman Surge, and uh, this is just an extremely capable uh, outdoors multi-tool. It is, as I've talked about, my favorite bushcrafting multi-tool, and that's primarily for its capabilities. It can ha it has a lot of tools that can do a whole heck of a lot of things, especially uh, tools such as the awl, of course, the large pliers, and of course having a saw, if I can get it out, and, of, and the main blade. So it has a lot of capabilities and a lot of usefulness when it comes to the outdoors and helps kind of balance the primary blade. Of course, you know, having two blades might be a little bit redundant, but having things such as the saw, the awl, the scissors, the pliers, really does make a big difference when you're outdoors trying to craft or make things or jerry-rig things up for survival. So that is the two tools that live in this pouch. I might change that up in the future, but for now, that's what I have. And like I said, this kit ultimately is designed to function similar in premise to the last Ultimate Survival Knife. And that is that my overall objectives for this kit is to have an effective, is to have an effective means of creating fire, creating shelter, and the signaling for rescue. So, you know, some people might say, you know, include you need to include all the five C's of survivability. And I would say that that is a righteous and valid point, but ultimately when you are trying to do things on the minimalistic side, you're trying to, you know, create a smaller kit that might not have uh, as much ability, the things that you want to ultimately focus on are making sure that your fire starting and your shelter craft are the heaviest priorities because those are inarguably the two points that you actually need to survive. Everything else, 
you know, is kind of taking a back seat, you know. Water, while certainly you don't want to go months or years without water, you really can't. You know, you can survive, you know, 24 hours without water. You can survive 24 hours without food. So really in that first 24 hours, making sure that you have, you know, the shelter and fire are your biggest things, especially here in Alaska, and especially in the winter. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this short little video on my high-end ultimate survival knife. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.